We're live. Yes, we are live. What's up, everybody? Um, my lights now. I think it's turned in all the way. Let me turn that on. Sorry, guys. Oops, my ball in the air. All right, hopefully that warms up. Okay. Woo! Blogtober day 30. Y'all, I'm almost there. One more day. Although I'm having fun with this, I will not miss doing daily vlogs. I don't know how those family daily vloggers do it. It can be me. But anyway, it's because I love y'all. Okay, so I'm going to talk about, hopefully briefly, why I love this flat paragraph method by Step Up to Writing, um, Step Up to Write program, writing program. Now, um, Special note, I only use the Step Up to Writing program for transitioning into paragraph writing. I have other programs that I use to teach writing. Now, let me just show you, because you, you saw the thumbnail. This is what I currently, what I'm using. Okay, y'all, I'm rambling. I didn't prepare anything. I just, I pulled out stuff because I'm about to teach my third grader uh, the basic paragraph structure. And I just started pulling stuff and I thought, oh, this would make a great vlog topic. So I'm trying to collect my thoughts. <laughs> just like our students trying to collect their thoughts when they're writing. So let me just start here. Okay, what is the step up? What is the stoplight method? So the stoplight method, and there are a couple of versions really two. I have a little bit more advanced and not that much more advanced, but the more simple one doesn't have the green light on the bottom. It looks like an actual stop sign. And so what the stoplight uh, method is, is based on driving the rules of the road. Green obviously means go, yellow slow down, red stop. So how we teach this to our children is you come up with a topic that you want to talk about. Pac-Man, uh rocks uh dolphins whatever and then you go you start writing about um that topic so you start generating everything you possibly can with a good uh organizer get all that information out and you start writing out some possible topic ideals so now this i got off of pinterest uh, mrs prince and company is the teacher who put this up so the example no, I'm all over the place. The example um, I used was the moon. So, and the topic sentence was um, moons orbit or travel around the planet. So that was our, that's our topic sentence. So go, go write that. So write down moon orbits, travels around the planet. Okay, now you're going to slow down and you're going to think, what details am I going to use that support this topic sentence? And here it says, give a reason detail or fact, um, use transition words. You don't have to, depending on what grade level you're working with. Um, I'm working with a third grader and he is a reluctant writer. So I'm going to have a different expectation for him than I would for my oldest one, who, while I was explaining this to him, he would have written four sentences already and be like, okay, mom, what's next? So make this work for your child. So we have our Supporting sentences in yellow. Yellow means slow down, be a little bit more reflective about what you're going to write about. So we have our Earth has one moon. It takes about 27 days to orbit, to orbit Earth. Jupiter has 50 or more moons. Its big moon is called Ganymede, and it takes seven Earth days to orbit Jupiter. So we have one, and I circle the periods to show the sentences and also to designate that we end the sentence with some kind of punctuation. So we have four sentences here, one, two, three, four, well, five sentences, and those are our topic sentences. Now, we've slowed down to think about the details we're going to use. Now, we're going to stop and give a little bit more detail. And actually, I skipped the part on here. So we have a supporting sentence. On Earth has one moon. Not supporting this too much, but we're going to give more detail. It takes about 27 days to orbit Earth. So really within the yellow section where you're slowing down, you are given a reason, a detail, or fact. So here we have uh, 
an Earth has one moon, and then we give more detail. We talk about Jupiter has more moons, and then we give a detail that the moon's called Ganymede, and then we give a little bit more um, information, and then we're done. So now, and don't worry, guys, I'm going to do a, a full fledged sit down recorded uh, video at the, the whiteboard explaining how I do this. Um, and then you're going to stop and get an example. And I don't, this is really for your more advanced writers. I'm sorry, I got the wrong um, stoplight. This should just say conclusion. So you have your supporting details and then you're going to close with your conclusion. And um, with the different versions out there, you'll have the conclusion and then the green, the last green light will just kind of restate the topic sentence, but I, I took that off. And then you have your conclusion. There are at least 147 moons in the solar system. Um, that's not the best conclusion sentence um, that I got from Mrs. Prince. I would have something like, those are some of the many ways the moon orbits um, planets in the solar system. But for right now, you're just teaching the structure. Green is topic sentence, yellow are your supporting details, and then your red is your conclusion. It wraps up, okay? And then why I use this is because I like in all subjects to teach my children visually and hands-on. And it takes a little bit more time, but it really sticks. So for this, and this is uh, in my future video, I'm going to actually go step-by-step step how to create um, a paragraph how you use the strips and how you do the little artwork so you can uh, make a model for your student and then help them get started writing. So over here, you have a picture of the moon, which is your topic. And that's just something to get your kids just going and thinking. Maybe they're fine, um, they're fine motor skills. Um, taxing for them so you know their stamina runs out after writing a couple of words you know they don't have writing stamina to keep going you know and, you know they do top sentence hands are tired hey let's start doing some drawings um or or chalk you can use chalk paint whatever usually kids don't tire when they're drawing something that they like maybe your kid's not a drawer if that's the case do one sentence a day make it a whole week a sentence a day and that gives them time to be um, thoughtful and reflectful and not be in tears about having to write so much in one sitting so all right so i was going through my archives pulling out um uh, examples for my third grader these are his brothers and i have this little garland up here to hide names stuff like that so my middle son did his on how to play pac-man you see here and you have his topic sentence, he's got supporting details, and then he's got his conclusion down here. Now, when you're doing these, and he's got his artwork up here, when you're writing these, you're going to cut the strips in about one inch strips, and then the children write on the strips first. You don't use the background paper. And I like black because it makes the strips pop. So they're going to cut out, they're going to write on, you cut out the strip. <laughs> And then they're going to write their sentences on the strips. Now, this is why I like this. As they're writing on the strip, they're going to think they're just going to just throw the strips on there. But obviously, the strips are going to overlap off the paper. And so this is going to cause them to be reflective about where they're going to cut. It's going to make them more mindful of their sentence. And then it's a beautiful thing when they start figuring out how to do this and move this here. Or, oh, you know what? I think this sentence, this is this is my best sentence. I'm gonna put it down here. You know, they start thinking and doing and it's a wonderful thing. So anyway, I just wanted to get on here and talk about that really quickly. It's the stoplight method. It's by Step Up to Writing. Um, it's a program, a writing program. And I will definitely have a sit down uh, more in more involved video where I walk you through how to do this. I will walk you through how to choose a topic, how to cut your strips, how to write on them, how to assemble them on the paper, how to do the artwork and all that good stuff. Oh, here's another one. This is my oldest one. Um, 
you know, you see the difference. This was my oldest one when we first started homeschooling. You see this, this used to be black, but I always um, showcase their artwork. I hang them by the window. So everything always fades, but um, this is where you can go. And then if your kid is a little bit more advanced with writing, you can add more stuff into the supporting details and, you know, the transitions and all of that. You can really build upon that. So I like that method as a transition into your basic paragraph structure. Okay. Now the step up, the stoplight model is an essay writing format. And then it really breaks down the basics of a paragraph. And okay, I'm at 10 minutes. I'm about to ramble for one minute and then I'm getting out of here because the boys have so many activities today. But listen, I used to, I have a journalism degree and there's a lot of writing in that, but I did a lot of writing. I was um, a essay writer for 3M, um, 3M, you know, they do the tape and there's a huge uh, conglomerate, the company, and they do a lot of essay writings for high school students, high school seniors, college students. So I was an essay grader for a number of those top competitions back in the day. I also was an editor for St. Martin's Press, which is a publishing house in the historic uh, flat iron building in, in New York City. And I was um, a grader for graduate applications at Columbia University. So I know writing very well. And even at that high level, even with Ivy League students, unless they had people putting their writing together and then you had naturally you know, gifted writers, a lot of people struggle with ideals, generation of ideals, and organization of those ideals. So I'm going to have a long unit on writing. That is my passion. And I will talk to you about the six traits of writing, which is what I use. It's the language. It's the shop talk that you can have with your children, like we have with math and with science, that vocabulary. We really need that in writing. So I love that. But anyway, um, as we're getting ready to get into more formal writing. Um, I just wanted to bring this out to you. Now we still use writing um, and rhetoric. We're on fables, but I like to switch up my writing. I like to do a little bit of this for about six to nine weeks and then bring something in and then go back and forth. So um, I'll probably do a live and you can just ask me questions how I do writing. Um, how I'm going to use this is uh, we do our our writing and rhetoric, our writing and rhetoric Monday through Thursday. And then on Friday, I'll be introducing the new sentence or the new topic for our writing for the week. So Fridays, I'll say, oh, okay, we're, we just wrapped up some studies on the Amazon. Let's say that. So on Friday, and I know my son's still really into the Amazon. I'll say, hey, let's write something about the Amazon, something fun that they want to do. Or if there's something that we've been doing in that writing program, we're talking about fables. Um, we, uh, let me read something about the fishermen and something, you know, if I see something that they're interested in, I can say, hey, let's write something about that. And then Friday, we'll brainstorm. We'll use our graphic organizers. Monday, we'll start brainstorming um, some topic sentences to say, hey, this is going on our details. And I'll spend like two or three days on details. And then for the conclusion, you know, that's really not that much time. Um, we can do that in a day. And then, um, but it's easy. And I kind of do this as like homework per se. So it's fun. So it doesn't feel like homework. And then um, that's how I can manipulate two different kinds of writing um, programs. All right, guys, I'm so long winded, but I don't care because I got one more day. <laughs> of thinking off the top of my head, even though I have a plan, you know, from my Blogtober ideals, I did a while back, the second week of Blogtober, I said Wednesdays would be my tutorials and I didn't have any ideals. I knew it was going to be a tutorial, but um, when I was pulling out stuff to start preparing for writing and setting up my room, because I have a writing center in, in our homeschool room, I said, wait a minute, let me just see if I can just talk about this. So these are what it looks like. This is your stoplight method. Google this, go on Pinterest, be inundated with wonderful pictures of what teachers have been doing. And you can do this. This is a great way to get your child started with more formal writing. And then as you get further along, I'll be showing you how we um, make our writer's notebooks, things like that, things that they're really interested in, 
and the different types of writing and all that good stuff. All right, guys, let me get out of here. If anyone has any questions, let me know before I bail out. And um, is there anything else I wanted to add? I don't know. Um, so tomorrow, October day 31, that's a Thursday. Um, I don't know what I'm going to be talking about. I'll figure something out. But I'm just rambling just to see if anyone's going to ask me a question about writing. Oh, real quick. You can use the stoplight method K-12. Seriously. It's great to start them young. But I've seen, because I've graded hundreds of high school senior essays, some juniors. I'm just saying. It's never too late to learn how to generate ideals, organize those ideals, right? <laughs> Just those two things help you out tremendously. And we won't even get into, you know, the other parts of paragraph writing. So uh, whatever grade your child is in, if your child is a prolific writer, they're not going to need that unless they can write, but in the beginning, it's like they're in mud trying to get the wheels turning. That's a great way to help them corral their thoughts and give it some kind of shape and form. Okay, so that is it. I could talk forever. Um, that's it. I'm out of thought. I'm out of here. This is Nikki with The Homeschool Life. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And... Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, guys. Peace out. And also let me know if you have any questions about the stoplight. I really should just do a live and just kind of like do things live with you. And then you can ask me questions as I'm doing things. And then um, wouldn't that be cool? I can say, hey, on this day, we're going to do this together. So get your black construction paper, red, yellow, green construction paper, cut them in one inch strips. Um, bring like some ideals that your kids are really into and um, let's work, let's workshop together. Let's do a teacher's workshop. So anyway, for real, for real, I'm out of here, guys. Bye-bye. <coughs> Thanks for hanging in with me.